loss, anxiety, depression, fear, sadness, loneliness, trauma, the list goes on. We may not be able to stop the pain, but perhaps we can make it more tolerable and more bearable by imparting it with meaning. To be clear, the question here is not what's the meaning of my pain, but rather what would give my pain meaning? And those are very two different questions, and I'm gonna explain that and more in this video, so stay tuned. Hello, my name is Jack, I'm a registered therapist and also no stranger to pain. Working as a therapist, I sit with people and I talk about their pain, the many faces of pain. One of the things I think people really struggle with is not just the pain, but the arbitrary nature of the pain, the idea that there's no reason behind it. What's the meaning? Why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? And why do these bad things happen? And sometimes they look to me for the answers and I don't know the answers. And if I did know the answers to the universe and why bad things happen, I'd be charging a lot more money. But remember, we're not looking for the meaning of our pain, but rather what would give our pain meaning. So the pain is there, then we add the meaning. Does it make sense? Are you following along? Are you staying tuned? Because I believe that if we give our pain meaning, us humans are capable of bearing an enormous amount of pain, much more than we think we are. Or as a wise man once said, he who has a why can bear any how. So if you don't believe me, believe that man, because his name was Frederick Nietzsche. Yeah, you heard of him? Let's take running a marathon, for example. Now, I don't think many people would just run 26 miles for no reason at all. But if you add the meaning of a marathon, a start, a finish, the accomplishment of running a marathon, all of that pain all of a sudden has meaning. People also run marathons for charitable causes, to raise money and awareness for things that they've been affected by, turning that pain into something good so that people further down the line don't experience the same pain and thus imparting it with meaning. Sigmund Freud had this idea about an unconscious defense mechanism that he called sublimation. The idea was that we take pain, we take these things that for whatever reason can't be expressed and we sublimate them, we channel them into something that's more acceptable. For example, someone who's feeling very angry can take up boxing rather than battering someone outside a kebab shop at 2 a.m. And while I certainly wouldn't disagree with Freud about this theory, I'm gonna take it one step further. That's right, Sigmund! Because I think that we can take our emotional pain and we can make it conscious and we can get it behind us, pushing us forward, compelling us to act in the world rather than sitting in front of us like some sort of amorphous blob of resistance. And when we do get it behind us, compelling us forward, then we've given it reason, we've given the pain meaning. How the heck do we do this? Well, I mentioned making it conscious, story time. When I was in therapy school, on our very first day, our therapist teacher said to us, some people get into the therapy game because they are trying to unconsciously heal their own wounds through healing the other. It's the whole wounded healer thing. And she said, I hope that that's not the only reason you're here. And I was sat there thinking, that's not the only reason I'm here. That might be the only reason I'm here. But a big part of therapy school is going to your own personal therapy to try to make conscious as much as possible all of your own pain, all of your own things from the past so that you don't project and transfer them onto your clients. But I have to admit, I probably am a bit of a wounded healer and I think that's okay as long as it's accompanied with awareness. I think using your pain from the past as a route to empathy and understanding of other people and to try to prevent them from feeling the same things that you have felt is a great way to add meaning to your pain. So the first thing we must do is try to be as aware as possible. Try to tell the truth as much as possible about our own pain and we can do that through things like going to therapy or journaling or talking to someone that we trust or just trying to reflect be as specific as you can about why you feel the ways you feel and then we can use that energy to serve ourselves and serve the other and maybe it's not becoming a therapist that's a bit extreme maybe it's making a youtube video talking about how you feel or writing a book fiction or non write a joke write a stand-up routine write some music create some art join a support group try to build a community and connect with other people that have felt the same things that you have let a beautiful flower bud up from the well of pain and despair Heal the world, make it a better... All right, I don't think we need to. I think all of these things can facilitate becoming aware of our pain and then using it to serve ourselves and to help other people. We can impart our pain with meaning. We can enrich our pain with meaning. Pain is like a dry sponge waiting to be sodden with meaning. Soak it with me. <laughs>